Welcome to BNC Live. I'm Tishani Whitlow. Thanks for tuning in. President Biden taking the main stage today for the first time at the United Nations General Assembly as president. The president facing an uphill battle as he tries to reassure allies that America is back, also back as an effective leader, despite the chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan and COVID resurgences around the globe. Let's take a lesson. A listen. I stand here today for the first time in 20 years with the United States not at war. We've turned the page. All the unmatched strength, energy, and commitment, will, and resources of our nation are now fully and squarely focused on what's ahead of us, not what was behind. I know this. As we look ahead, we will lead. We will lead on all the greatest challenges of our time, from COVID to climate, peace and security, human dignity and human rights, but we will not go it alone. We will lead together with our allies and partners and in cooperation with all those who believe as we do that this is within our power to meet these challenges, to build a future that lifts all of our people and preserves this planet. But none of this is inevitable. It's a choice. And I can tell you where America stands. Even with the president's reassurances, the question, has America changed since former President Trump left office, still remains, though. Here with me to answer that question is foreign policy expert and political analyst Barry Nassbaum and RNC national spokesperson Paris Denard. Thank you both for joining me this afternoon. So let's jump right in. Barry, you're up first. We'll start with you. President Biden set out a goal to change the perception of America and how it's viewed on the world stage following former President Donald Trump, his predecessor. Did he accomplish that today, or is it too soon to tell? I think that was the perfect first question. And on that issue, Biden did a great job. He spoke for an extended period of time, reading the prompter that obviously he didn't fill with a speech. Somebody else wrote a good one for him. But he said virtually nothing that people would get upset about. He was nice guy, Uncle Joe, and I'm going to skip every problem the world has with the exception of climate. And when I address climate, I'll do it in such a way that no one's going to argue with me. Same thing on COVID. Who is against solving the COVID crisis? The rest, platitudes and really nice themes. And when you walk away from the speech, you might shake your head. I'm not sure what I just heard, but it sounded okay, I think. All right, Paris, we know that there's some trouble uh, in paradise, especially considering, in fact, this whole France deal and the blowback that it's getting from that. What was your reaction to the president's speech? My reaction was the president's rhetoric didn't match reality. Uh, he talked about COVID-19, but didn't hold China accountable from the world stage there at the UN. He talked about humanitarian issues, but failed to talk about the fact that the Taliban, as we speak right now, is uh, attacking women uh, and Christians. Uh, he didn't talk about the fact that we have a humanitarian crisis right now at the southern border with people coming over from uh, Central America and 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 Mexico. And when you talk about humanitarian issues, there's been a lot of people upset with the seemingly uh, treatment of, of Haitian uh, illegal immigrants that have come over, migrants that have come over here, that does not seem to be the same as the treatment to other uh, migrants that have come over. And that is a human rights issue that people are talking about that I've seen. Uh, the rhetoric versus reality. And here, when you talk about world affairs and global leaders, you had a wonderful relationship with France and President Trump. President Trump was invited to Bastille Day. The first, uh, one of the first state dinners that the president had was with President and Mrs. Macron. And now France is so upset with the United States and Joe Biden's uh, deal that he made with Australia that he pulled the United States ambassador. Boris Johnson from, from the Great Britain, the prime minister, tried to get a hold of President Biden for 36 hours. And for 36 hours, President Biden and ignored his calls during the botched Afghanistan withdrawal, not to mention the fact that the Biden administration botched a, a drone deal, a drone attack that led to civilians being killed, seven children, not the two terrorists that they claim to have killed, children. So on a foreign policy 
a stage at this UN speech, his rhetoric didn't match the reality that the global leaders see and that the American people see, and they are looking for the leadership that we had with President Trump. All right, Paris holding the president's feet to the fire. Uh, Barry, America wants to continue to be the anchor of the world. Are we? Didn't we lose that to China? Uh, wow, right on. Great question, and you are correct. I think the important takeaway from the speech today is not that it sounded okay, even though we didn't know what it said, is, as your other guest mentioned, all the issues that he skipped over. Iran is racing to build nuclear weapons and long-range missiles to deliver them. Didn't get mentioned. The Abraham Accords, the most dramatic peace and trade agreement in 70 years, skipped over. China has a massive expansion in their military and trade aggression around the world, no mention. Our borders are out of control. Immigration across the world is flooding borders as if there is no sovereignty, not mentioned. As Nikki Haley, our brilliant former ambassador said this morning, under the Trump administration, the world knew where we stood. At the UN, she said, we took the names of our enemies and they had the back of our allies. Joe Biden is platitudes but skipping the issues. For example, as he said, you blow up a lot of civilians, you claim it's terrorists, you get caught, you don't say anything. You abandon your allies in Afghanistan, and I mean 100 countries at various times were there. Hundreds of billions of dollars in equipment were left. It's as if the Taliban is not slaughtering people in the street, men, women, and children, especially the Christians they can find, no mention. I think this speech is more importantly to be looked at as what didn't Joe Biden say versus what Joe Biden did say. On a socialist basis, it sounds like the world is getting ready for massive amounts of American cash to flow everywhere. He wants to vaccinate the world, even though the third world, they don't want the vaccines because their infection rate is almost nothing. But Hundreds of millions of doses are going out, and they're going to be paid for by your and my tax dollars. All right, Barry, I think some folks would disagree with you on that. But, uh, gentlemen, we got to wrap, but I want to get your final word, so I ask if you can keep your responses brief. What's at stake here for everyday Americans if America is diminishing on the world stage? I will tell you that we have to have policies that put the American people first. And we had that under President Trump working with congressional Republicans, and we have to have that again. Our RNC chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel, has already called for Secretary Blinken to be fired for his dereliction of duty that he, kept, that he had in Afghanistan. But it's all these issues abroad impact everyday Americans, especially those in the black community, disproportionately. So we have to hold them accountable. All right, Barry, your response. I agree with everything he just said, and I would like to add, we need a leader who leads from the front not somebody that the world is making fun of for the reason that he doesn't seem to be able to articulate and doesn't seem to be able to engender any kind of confidence. We need the man to step up or step aside because so far I'm not seeing leadership that I as an American am confident in. All right, step up or step aside. I guess that brings me to my last question. Approval ratings, uh, he's not doing well. It's probably, uh, probably one of the lowest ratings